So this particular section comes from uh, Genesis 17, not from Leviticus, but it is connected with the commandment in Leviticus. And there it says, but an uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Well, this is, this is a bit strange because for modern Christ followers, you know, while many uh, look at uh, circumcision as okay, you know, um, an, an, an interesting, a bit archaic, Kind of um, practice, um, but 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 it but it is um, but it is a bit strange. Um, wh why would why would God think that it's so important? Why would ancient Israelites think it's so important? But here in Hebrew, the arel zachar. So arel again is foreskin. So so the male that is foreskinned and the foreskin male. Asher lo imul et abasar arlato. This is exact phraseology that we saw in um, in Leviticus, right? Imul basar arlato. Same thing. So whoever will not lo is not will not be circumcised. Uh, the the flesh of his foreskin, right? The nicharta. Hanefesh ha hahiu, so me uh, amea, so and and may his soul uh, be uh, may may his soul perish or be cut off from from the people. Et briti hefer, and the emphasis here is my covenant he broke. So in other words, this is very very serious. Circumcision is very, very important. There's a couple more um, texts that I would like to bring in before we launch into more of, uh, more of um, verbal analysis of what that would be. We're going to see what Rabbi Sachs is saying about this and we'll talk these issues through. All right, so now this is one of those very strange um, text in Exodus chapter 4 and this is a text when the Lord God of Israel comes after Moses seeking his immediate death. Now you would think that's rather strange considering the fact that you know Moses is the presumed author of the Torah and there is just I mean you just cut out Moses from um, the biblical revelation uh, even New Testament biblical revelation, and you realize there's m not much Bible that will be left. Um, and so this is a bit problematic for the covenant God of Israel to come and seek the very death of Moses. Now, this what's even more interesting is this: this particular story comes as the warning is given to the Pharaoh to let uh, God's people go. So, in other words, um, as Moses is, is preparing to lead Israelites out of Egypt, you know, the, the, the Egyptians are being warned and God is calling for freedom of the Israelites' people. Uh, and Moses, of course, as you well know, is appointed to be the leader to lead Israelites out of Egypt. But God decides to, um, God decides to intervene and kill Moses. Now, this is a bit strange, of course, right? It is a step. Now, of course, the background here is that uh, for one reason or another, Moses have not circumcised the his son that he had with the Zipporah, with Zipporah. Um, and we see actually here that Zipporah. Zipporah um, realizing what's going on, that the Lord is about to end the life of Moses. Now, we don't exactly know what went on then, in the sense, like, how did it look physically like? How did she even know that he's about to, to kill him? And, uh, and did he come in, in, uh, as an armed man? Or did he say anything? None, none of this conversation, none of 
what had transpired is being told us. Other than there is a summary of uh, what we read here in Hebrew, the b'derech b'malon. So and uh, and there was on the way to the hotel, malon. Even today in modern Hebrew, it means hotel, but it's a lodging place. I suppose if you translate it as a hotel, you know, it's sort of like uh, people stop thinking of an ancient times. But that's exactly what it was. But if Geshehu Hashem veYevakesh Ha Mito. So and Hey Yud Hey Vav Hey, the Tetragrammaton, the the covenantal name of God. He has met, has met, um, presumably Moses, and sought. This is the same word for those of you who know a little bit of a um, conversational Hebrew. To say thank you, we say toda, and to say you welcome, or to ask, well, to welcome, to say you welcome, uh, or please, we say beva kasha, beva kasha. Um, so um, this is the same root. Leva, the verb is leva kesh, um, which basically means to ask, to ask. Now this is again one of the Great reasons to go take a take a couple of hours, uh, go into the student corner and nail down the Hebrew alphabet. You would be absolutely amazed how much more you'll be be getting out from all of the courses at Israel Study Center. Now you don't need to know Hebrew, but if you just memorized the alphabet without even knowing Hebrew, just getting down the alphabet, there's so much more that you can get. So so the Yivakesh Hamito. So and um, and God asked or sought um, his death. All right. And so what what Zipporah uh, did is the tikach Zipporah tzor. So and Zipporah and Zipporah took and took Zipporah um, some kind of knife, basically. The tich rot et arlat bana. And she very quickly cut um, cut the um, the foreskin the foreskin of the sun, and basically, as the story continues, we see that Moses is saved. Now, incidentally, and this is a bit to a different discussion, but I just thought it would it would be a good, nice time to um, to give the kinds of things to show the kinds of things that that uh, people can learn. If, if we pay attention to Hebrew, in Genesis 2, we read that uh, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Now, we all are familiar with this, right? Um, I will make him a helper suitable, or compatible, or co uh, comfortable to him. All right, and this is what it says: "Vayomer, vayomer Hashem Elohim, lotov heyot haAdam levado." So um, this is more or less straightforward, and and the Lord said, God said it is not good for men to be alone. Now, this is where it's getting interesting. So, and then he says, "Yase lo, I will make unto him." Okay, this is all right. And this is the word here, Ezer. Now, the Ezer is helper. Um, Ezer, and then this last word, it's a compound one, com compound word, meaning like all these words suitable for him, okay, are more or less packed into it. But let me first talk about Ezer. Ezer uh, is usually translated as a helper. Here, the problem with a helper is that the the feeling that we get with the English word helper is that helper is um, someone who does your dishes, is someone that helps out with the groceries. But in Bibl ancient Biblical Hebrew, Ezer is, uh, is someone who is almost like a military agent, is someone who is willing to die and to kill for you. So in other words, when God said that he will give Eve to Adam, and uh, the reason Adam is called Adam is because Adam comes from the ground, and the ground in Hebrew is 
Adama, Adam, Adama. And, uh, and when God says that he will give Chava or Eve to Adam, why is she called Chava? Because this is the verb for life, for to be. Um, so she's the one that's going to be progenerator of life. Um, and so, therefore, she is called Chava or Eve. Now, Eve here, then, before God decides to create her and give her to Adam to be this so called helper suitable for him, what we see here is what God is thinking and what God is saying. So, what he is saying is he is calling him as her Ezer. Now, uh, Abraham was actually Ezer to Lot, in that he, um, remember when Lot's family was captured, kidnapped, um, Abraham took some men, he took some armed men, they went out, they killed people, and they got, they got uh, Lot's family back, sound and safe, all right? So Ezer is someone who is willing to die for you and to kill for you. Now, uh, those of you who uh, who know this, uh, who know a bit of Hebrew, already know exactly where I'm going with this. But those of you who don't would be actually surprised to find out that this phrase that's translated something like "suitable to him" that's not a, that's not really what it says in Hebrew. So Ezer Kenegdo is interesting. Literally, it's it's that that he is she is uh, God is going to make a helper. Uh, that is against, Neged is against him. So, did you get this? Like someone or that against him. Now, if you think about it, you know that all the strong marriages around you that you're familiar with know that uh, they almost never have uh, the yes sir wives that are simply doing dishes and washing floors. Uh, those marriages, strong marriages, are always have women that are strong, outspoken, that's got their opinion, they're humble women, they're true to the Lord's teachings about humility, but they're strong women, they're, they're women that don't just, don't just say yes to everything their husband's saying. Sometimes, like in the case of Tzipora, that she saved the life of Moses by going against his will, actually going into circumcising the child herself when Moses had failed to do so. Uh, so it's this guy. So Tzipora is a very good example of someone who is Ezer Kenegdu. Shalom, I'm here to invite you to come with us on a journey of discovery into the Jewish context and culture that will forever change the way you read and interpret the Bible. As you slowly go through our self-paced, on-demand program in Jewish studies relevant for Christians, you will gain ability to discover the original meaning of the biblical texts. You will see the nuance hidden behind our best and faithful translations and to interpret these ancient texts in their original meaning. At Israel Bible Center, we provide you with the state-of-the-art, simple-to-use technology. This way, you can study on your own from the comfort of your own home, even towards your certificate in the Jewish context and culture. This study will strengthen your ministry as you continue to serve God. We will guide you through a large collection of crash courses by our fascinating faculty and roundtable talks with leading world scholars, our weekly Israel Bible magazine as well as Israel Bible podcast that focuses on the land of Israel will assist us along the way. We believe that the Bible does not need to be rewritten, but it needs to be carefully reread. Click the link and register today to our wide variety of biblical courses.